In the depths of the sky, wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night A tale of ice and dust, gracefully it slides Hello, Comet Chasers. I'm Les. And I'm Amanda. Welcome to this month's episode of Comet Chasing. Les, I hear December has some comets worth losing a bit of sleep over. Absolutely, Amanda. We've got a packed lineup from Comet skimming dangerously close to the sun to one that's essentially a 60-kilometer mystery machine. And don't forget, there's also a comet that's perfect for binoculars, if you're in the right hemisphere. Yeah, I might need to move south for the holidays just to catch it. Stick around as we break down what's up, where to look, and the science behind these icy wanderers. Let's dive in before Les books a one-way ticket. The brightest comet in December is C2024 G3 Atlas, which is visible in binoculars to observers in the Southern Hemisphere. This comet will dive toward the Sun, passing very close, within 0.1 astronomical units, on January 13th, brightening as it approaches. There is not yet enough information to predict how bright it will ultimately get, but even if the number looks impressive, the visibility will be poor due to its proximity to the Sun at the time. This is likely going to generate hyperbolic headlines and articles that will focus on the brightness alone. They may also find a way to tie it to something inane to make it seem memorable in some way. Thank goodness January 13th isn't a Friday. The light curve, what astronomers call a graph of the brightness of a comet over time, for this comet is interesting. Here is the light curve from Seiichi Yoshida's weekly information about bright comets website, Note how the brightness jumped by up to two magnitudes at the beginning of October. We don't really know what happened there. It could be a temporary outburst, or the brightening may last. The red line indicates the brightness based on the data prior to October. If you adjust the line upward to fit the more recent data, the maximum brightness of the comet increases significantly. There is also the question of whether or not this comet will survive its close passage to the Sun. To assess whether C2024 G3 Atlas will survive its perihelion, we consider two critical factors, the Bortle survival limit and the comet's orbital characteristics. The Bortle survival limit, introduced by John Bortle in 1991, uses this formula, where H is the comet's absolute magnitude and Q is its perihelion distance in astronomical units. With Q equals 0.094 astronomical units, the survival threshold is calculated to be H equals 7.56. Current estimates place C2024 G3 Atlas's value of H between 7.4 and 8.7, with the brighter value based on the more recent data. Either way, this suggests that the comet is precariously close to the survival threshold. Orbital characteristics provide further insight. It has been claimed that this comet is apparently dynamically old in the ALPO Comet News for November 2024, but Greg Crinklaw, our resident astronomer, was not able to trace this to the calculations or insights this claim was based on. Given the eccentricity near 1.0, Greg sees no reason to think it's not a dynamically new comet, arriving from the Oort cloud for the first time. Such Oort cloud comets are often dust-poor, and particularly vulnerable near the Sun. As they approach perihelion, intense thermal stress and sublimation can destabilize their nuclei, frequently leading to fragmentation. At this time, it appears that 2024 G3 teeters on the edge of the Bortle survival limit, which may be tipping toward disruption if it is indeed a dynamically new comet. We may simply have to wait and see. 2024 G3 is visible in the Southern Hemisphere only. The best dates to view are mornings from December 25th through the end of the month. Remember, we don't yet have reliable magnitude predictions, but it will likely be perceptible in 7 by 50 binoculars during this time. It will become brighter each morning, but will also be closer to the horizon as it approaches the sun. This comet should be very interesting to follow because it could brighten faster than anticipated, and if it happens to disintegrate while we can still easily observe it, it might brighten dramatically for a few days. That means that if you get up early, you may be the first to detect these happenings. If it survives perihelion on January 13th, 
it will be better visible in the evening sky starting on the 15th. There may also be a short period of visibility from the northern hemisphere in the mornings, starting January 8th. We will, of course, have better and more detailed predictions in our January video. Much has already been said and written about 2023 A3 Suchinchen Atlas. The media considers it over. But in fact, it remains a very nice telescopic comet throughout the month. If this was as good as it would get, we would still be highlighting it. As seen from a suburban country location in the Northern Hemisphere, 2023 A3 will be perceptible in small telescopes, well-placed in the western sky during the evenings until December 19th. It should remain a nice view in the telescope, showing a two-arc minute coma and a 14-arc minute tail. From equatorial regions, it will be perceptible in small telescopes until the evening of December 6th. It is not well-placed for observation from the southern hemisphere. 29P schwassmann wachmann is a unique comet with a fascinating mystery. It has frequent significant outbursts, typically resulting in a brightening of 0.5 to 1.0 magnitudes, and sometimes brightening by as much as 5 magnitudes. 5 magnitudes is the difference between the faintest star you can see with the unaided eye from a suburban location and one of the brighter stars in the sky. 29P schwassmann wachmann or just 29P, was discovered on November 15, 1927 by Arnold Schwassmann and Arno Arthur Wachmann at the Hamburg Observatory in Bergedorf, Germany, on glass photographic plates. At the time, the comet was in outburst at about magnitude 13. This comet has a diameter of approximately 60 kilometers and is of a class of objects called centaurs. They are defined as small, icy bodies that orbit between the orbits of Jupiter and Neptune. The centaurs originally came from the Kuiper Belt, a disk of objects that orbit between Neptune and out to approximately 50 astronomical units from the Sun. 29P has a 14.8-year orbital period and last passed perihelion in early March 2019. It varies in its distance from the Sun between 5.8 astronomical units at perihelion and 6.3 astronomical units, at aphelion, which is an unusually small variation for a comet. It is the position of the Earth and the outbursts rather than the orbit that primarily determines how visible it is in a telescope. The outbursts occur roughly every 59 days, typically taking 5 to 10 days to subside. Up to three subsequent outbursts may occur between 5 and 10 days afterward, each typically smaller than the last although on some occasions they can be even brighter than the first. These outbursts make 29P one of the most interesting comets to follow, both visually and scientifically. The root cause of these outbursts remains a mystery. A 2016 paper by Richard Miles investigates the periodic outbursts using photometric data spanning 2002 to 2014. The research identifies 64 outburst times revealing a rotation period of 57.7 days for the comet's nucleus. This rotation is much slower than other similar bodies and may be key to understanding the outbursts. Seasonal variations in activity and long-lived discrete cryovolcanic sources are described as evident. He attributes the outbursts to subsurface melting of CH4, otherwise known as methane, and the release of supervolatile gases like carbon monoxide and nitrogen, providing thermal energy. A novel mechanism proposes that gas pressure beneath a crustal plate triggers explosive events, with the process resetting as the plate reseals. Other papers have investigated the possibility of self-bombardment by pieces of cometary material ejected earlier from its nucleus, which might explain the subsequent smaller outbursts, and even satellites touching the surface of the comet nucleus. Although the cryovolcanism hypothesis is the most accepted, it doesn't fully explain everything we measure. So, ultimately, the mystery remains. Recently, the Webb Space Telescope was pointed at 29P, which detected two jets of CO2 emanating from the north and south ends, and a jet of carbon monoxide directed right at us. The jet facing us isn't a big surprise, as it is also on the sunlit side, since we are closer to the sun. This animation models how these jets are oriented. Now is the time to spot 29P. On November 3rd, 
the comet was reported to have had its most intense series of eruptions since 2022, brightening from roughly 16th magnitude, invisible except in images and very large telescopes, to a much brighter 11.6. Throughout November, it was found to be between magnitude 11 and 12, but it will likely start to fade during December. 29P is perceptible in six inch or larger telescopes from both hemispheres for most of the month, or as long as it remains bright, excluding interference from the moon from December 14th through the 20th. We'd like to also mention another comet, 333P linear. It is a periodic comet that passes within 1.1 astronomical units of the sun every 8.7 years, most recently on November 29th. It will pass within 0.5 astronomical units of the Earth in early December, when it will reach maximum brightness of 11.5. 333P will be perceptible in a 6-inch or larger telescope until December 12th, way up in the north, moving from Cannes Venatici through Ursa Major and into Draco. It is not visible from the Southern Hemisphere. That brings us to the end of this month's Comet Chasing. December offers opportunities to observe comets both in binoculars and telescopes, whether it's tracking C2024G3 as it brightens toward perihelion, seeing 29P in outburst, or catching the fleeting visibility of periodic comets like 333P linear. We'll be back next month with updates on C2024, G3 Atlas, and more comets to observe in the new year. Remember, observing conditions vary. So make the most of clear nights and the best dates for your hemisphere. And keep an eye out for unexpected changes like outbursts or fragmentation. Until then, clear skies and happy comet chasing.